Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about color management within DaVinci Resolve, and specifically, what is a input color space? What is a working color space? And what is an output color space? And how can we use all three effectively together to create the best color pipeline possible within DaVinci Resolve? So let's jump into the color page. So let's look at this last clip. This was shot in RE Log C. You can see it's flat, there's not a lot of contrast, not a lot of saturation. Now this illustrates our first talking point today, which is input color spaces. So in this case, the input color space is the camera color space, which captured this footage in this case, RE log C. So we need to take it from RE log C and eventually convert it into what we call Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, which is the most common output color space, especially for online deliverables. And the best way to do this is by using what we call a color space transform. So we just create a new node and we add color space transform, which is an open effects plugin made by DaVinci Resolve. It's built into the program. So in the input color space, I want to choose RE wide gamut three, and then my input gamma, I want to be RE log C. And then my output color space, I'm going to use Rec 709 and output gamma 2.4. So here we have a log to Rec 709 color space transform. So this is without it and this is with it. Obviously you can see that it's given it a nice amount of saturation and contrast and essentially converted it into what now looks good. So we've had our input color space transformed into our output color space. So simply put, if I create a node underneath this, this now becomes my working color space because this is where I'm going to be working and using the nodes and all the DaVinci Resolve tools to create my color grade. So I might want to decrease the exposure a little, add a little bit more contrast, might even want to really warm it up. Whatever you want to do here, you're essentially working and doing the color grade. And because I'm working underneath the output color space transformation, this is considered my working color space. So there's no color space transformation happening before it hits my adjustments. So my effective working color space is RE log C. So what we can do to improve this pipeline one step further is actually convert it from RE log C into an intermediary working color space so that we can do all of our adjustments inside a really large working color space container. And then once we've done that, we can then output it into Rec 709. Color space transform is the same effect we're going to add onto this first adjustment. So for the import color space, it's exactly the same wide gamut three and import gamma is RE log C. Now this time, instead of moving it into Rec 709 gamma 2.4, I'm actually going to convert it into DaVinci Wide Gamut and then DaVinci Intermediate. So I'm converting it from my input color space now into a working color space. So let's say log to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And now with my output color space transform, I need to convert it from the working color space, which is DaVinci Wide Gamut. And that is being converted into my output color space, which is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So that's the basic concept laid out. So now what we can do is go to this clip here, which is actually Blackmagic Raw Gen 5. Now I'm going to copy this node tree from the RE Log C footage. All we have to do now that we're treating a slightly different camera is go up here and change the input color space, which is the camera color space, and change it from RE Wide Gamut into Blackmagic Film Gen 5. Effectively what we've done is we've simply just changed the input color space transformation to match the camera input, but we are still now working in a DaVinci wide gamut working color space. Now the beauty of working in a managed pipeline like this is simply that no matter what camera footage you give this pipeline, you're always going to be working in the same effective DaVinci wide gamut working color space. And so the controls are going to feel very, very similar every single time you use this pipeline. So hopefully that has helped explain the differences between input color space, working color space, and output color space. But what does this have to do with color management? Well, essentially what you're looking at right here is color management. You're managing the colors transformations throughout your pipeline. And if you are to go over to 
Da Vinci's color management and changed the color science to be Da Vinci YRGB color managed and you use a manual adjustment and go down to custom. We can essentially choose the exact same settings which we set in the color space transform on the node but we can actually use those adjustments globally within DaVinci Resolve. So our input color space in this case can be Blackmagic Film Gen 5. Our timeline color space can be transferred to DaVinci Wide Gamut and then we can use the standard SDR and our output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So our timeline color space is the working color space, but we have the same three concepts. We've got our input color space, our timeline color space, which is our working color space, and our output color space. Now these three settings is telling DaVinci Resolve to effectively do the exact same thing which we've done with our nodes manually. So if we go ahead and click save, obviously the footage completely changes because we've got the additional node adjustments here. Now I'm free to reset this node tree and simply use nodes to work inside the working color space which is still DaVinci Wide Gamut because that's what we've selected here as our timeline color space. So what happens when we've got multiple clips and we're working in a color managed workflow? Well you can simply select the RE Log C clips, right click and change the input color space to be RE Log C which you can see it's done automatically. So now no matter what I do within my node structure I'm working in a nice working color space of DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that helped a little bit. If you still have questions, please drop them in the comment box below and I'll be sure to answer them below or put out a new video in the future to explain a few more concepts to you. Peace out. We'll see you in the next one.